The train moves on, time stands still, and memories rush in. The first photograph shows a Vernon Vickers Mark III over Baghdad in Iraq. War making and picture taking work hand in hand. What the photograph frames, the photographer also excludes. So, what is missing? RAF planes were used to suppress the great Iraqi revolution of 1920 and it was brutal. The Sunday Times reported that British troops killed 10,000 Arabs in that summer alone. Their blood fed the land. Just like more recent invasions, it was for control of Iraqi oil. Thirteen years before the destruction of Guernica, Arthur Harris described the air campaign the Arab now knows what a real bombing means in casualties and damage. They now know that within 45 minutes, a full-size village can be practically wiped out and the third of its inhabitants killed by four or five machines. In the legacy of British imperialism, there are no photographs of the dead. The second photograph. The man on the left in a hat is my father. It's 1970 and he is in Tripoli in Libya, not far from home in Malta, where we all wait for him. He has been gone a long time, but there is a lot of work to do there. He's putting up buildings for Muammar Gaddafi, who only one year before took power in a revolutionary coup against King Idris. Gaddafi was a socialist and an Arab nationalist. He asked ex-colonial foreign workers to come and help build the country. So my father went. In the photograph, my father seems happy and warmly embraces the other man. Who he is, I do not know. But the brotherhood of ex-colonial peoples at the time is impossible to describe. In 1971, my father returned home and told us about the house he had built for Gaddafi that had a bowling alley constructed in the basement. Apparently, Gaddafi loved to bowl. Now, 40 years later, as I sit on this train, British troops are attacking Libya with other European powers. Soon, Gaddafi will be dead. This is a photograph of a woman called Hannah. At least, I think it is. When Gaddafi was overthrown, this photograph was in documents found in a house in Tripoli. It was in a bedroom belonging to a young woman called Hannah Gaddafi. Throughout the 1970s, Gaddafi had used Libya's oil wealth to help struggling people all over the world. The Black Panthers, the IRA, the Red Army Faction, ETA, the Sandinistas, and the Red Brigades were all engaged in revolutionary struggles against repression, colonialism, and imperialism. In 1986, US President Reagan ordered an attack on Gaddafi's house. He survived the assassination attempt, but held up a photograph of his young adopted daughter, Hannah, who was said to have died in the attack. Another thought, perhaps the building that the American bombs destroyed was the same one my father had built many years earlier. Forgotten stories, memories, people. The train moves on.